Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hey, John, how you doing? Good, Art. Good to see you again. What's on your mind today, partner? Well, uh, the, the beach, uh, sunshine, uh, going out and eating in restaurants, all those kind of things. But um, yeah. uh, I'm still hunkered down pretty much. <laughs> Are you really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. You know, we, okay. we live in California. And if um, I know that you don't watch a lot of news, but uh, Southern California is in a world of hurt right now. Uh, uh, things instead of uh, leveling off and going away are uh, heating up in uh, the COVID world. Uh, but I thought we'd talk today. We're both grandparents. We both have uh, young uh, uh, grandchildren who are in a whole variety of, uh, from uh, uh, elementary to high school. Yeah, you have high schools. I do. Okay, and, and gran college. grandchildren. Yeah, grandchildren in college. Yeah, you have in college. I have two there at a college. Actually, I have one that's in college right now. Uh, that's uh, uh, getting ready to take his EMT test. So yeah. Wow, great. But they've been that's doing great. they've been doing uh, everything uh, uh, online for the last year. In fact, sure. my, yeah. my one of my grandsons, uh, uh, his uh, uh, girlfriend is on a full ride scholarship at Fordham University in New York, and uh, she's in a first year and they, everything uh, dormitory everything. And they uh, they went to total online and they were fooling around with opening up again. And they said, we're not, we're not ready yet. And, you know, New York is doing well. But the topic for today is uh, uh, and I wonder how you feel about uh, our grandkids, particularly the smaller ones, uh, going back to school. It seems like uh, there's a push to do that. How do you feel about that? How do I feel? I think I feel just the opposite of the way you feel, just on general principle. Okay. Good. <laughs> um, how do I feel? Well, I think we probably agree on a bunch of things, but we probably disagree uh, because you're still locked down to a greater degree than I am. Sure. And uh, I love the way you say, well, we're in California. Things are desperate. You know, we're in California, both of us, and we only live 50 miles apart. And you see things differently than I do. And I know, I hear this. But I don't I do think it's a mile, I don't think it's a mileage, John. <laughs> I I do watch the news, and I do still think there is um, a little bit of exaggeration. This is a serious deal, but I think there's a mindset and an exaggeration that we need to get past. And I don't think we're past yet. We're still arguing about it. Uh, one of the problems we have is that we keep reporting new cases a thousand new cases oh, no 200 new cases new cases is irrelevant it's an irrelevant number when you're constantly expanding your testing what would be relevant is to know that out of the thousand new cases the percentage of positive has gone up or the percentage of positive tests has gone down that would be relevant because the, the thousand new cases is irrelevant. It's, it's such a small part of the whole. We don't know. That's my first thing. I, 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 John, 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 you know, maybe we should uh, uh, even this out a little bit. My first question to you is, who sent you those talking points? Or do you get several uh, emails a day giving you uh, standard talking points? Uh, because it really has nothing to do with the testing other than the testing. It has to do with hospitalizations. It no, has to no, Art, no. I beg, so I it, beg it, to differ. Because, no, no, because no, 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 no. listen to this. Hospitalizations listen to this. are moving up. The hospitalizations is a different number. That's the problem. If they report hospitalizations and they report deaths, those are real solid numbers. Mm -hmm. po new positive cases is a meaningless number. What's meaningful is how many more people are going into the hospital with it. What's okay. meaningful is how many more people are dying with it. That's Those are meaningful numbers. So I re, I watch the same news you do. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so either. I watch fair and balanced news. Oh, oh yes, right. F-O-X, Fox. <laughs> and, uh, and you are indoctrinated to the left. 
Yeah, okay, I actually, so you... actually, I read news. I read newspapers as well. Oh, Sorry. God bless. All right, you are liberal bastards. You are like the middle of the rotor. I can't stand it. <laughs> so listen, my problem is twofold. Number one is we are not getting the information we need. Again, you keep quoting, as does all the media, new cases, new cases here, new cases there. It's an irrelevant number. I want to know how many more people are dying from it. And I want to know how many more people are being hospitalized from it. Those are, are, are legitimate numbers because it's a, it's a, let's not get into that. Let me get back to the kids. You and I have grandchildren. I think we both agree, but I'm not sure that the older grandchildren, those um, maybe high school and college, are probably acting more like adults, although not necessarily, than those kids that are in below high school level. And when I say acting like adults, they're semi-responsible for each other. Yes, they, for they, have, they have the ability to be semi-responsible. They have the ability. To be. They, they aren't always, right. but they have that ability. Uh, after all, they're the ones who go to spring break <laughs> and flood the beaches with no masks. Yes, um, and, bring, and COVID, yeah. bring COVID home to the old folks like us. Yeah, and that's the key, bring COVID home to the old folks. Because my problem is not if they get COVID. My problem is bringing it home to the old folks. So I don't think the high schools need to be locked down and the colleges need to be locked down. I mean, is it, a, is it an option? Sure. If you want to do it, you want to play safe, you want to go to that extreme, God bless you, lock the whole thing down, do it all online. But I don't think it's necessary because that's not the, the group that's going to get really, really hurt by the COVID. That's the group that's going to get it. My grandson, we had lunch uh, on uh, Saturday. My grandson said, yeah, he said, I think I got it in, in March. He said, my friend and I got it at the same time. It was really bad. Uh, it was bad for three days. We got over it. So he thinks he might be immune. He hasn't been tested for it. But, you know, if, if he got that antibody, that'd be great. So the point is, these kids are going to get it. And if you want to get to herd immunity sometime, some way, you got to let those people get it. The people that need to be protected are not the high schoolers. They're not the grammar school children. The people that need to be protected are you and me, the people who are over 60, the people with uh, underlying Im immune problems or whatever they're describing. Those are the people that need to be protected. We still have not changed the basic societal attitude from locking everything down. Oh my God, let's lock everything down to Let's protect the people who are the most vulnerable. Let's protect the people who can get really hurt by it. Let's let the other people get it, share it. Let's protect them. Let's be ready to put them in the hospital if they need it. But let's let them start building the herd immunity. So, jo so, jo that, so, jo so jo that doesn't exist yet. And that's what I want to say. Now, going to the small kids. Let me finish. Going to the small kids. You and I probably agree that small kids, those and kids below eighth grade, they seem to be virus catchers. They seem to come home with every disease known to man, and it does run rampant through a school. If Jimmy Jones gets a, a cold in the first grade, it's, not a, it's only a matter of time before everybody in the first grade gets that cold, and the kids all bring it home, and the parents get the cold. And I'm saying, for the virus, that's not that's not a dire emergency. Okay, John. What so, a dire so, okay. emergency so, is John, they give it to their grandparents. One of the one of the one of the reasons why I love you as a partner, as a business partner, is that you have uh, a high capacity spleen, but unfortunately, you're never going to empty it. So I hope you know maybe you just hold your hands on your lap just for a second, so that yes. we can share some sanity uh, with our uh, viewing audience as well. And uh, the other side of this is that I fully recognize that in some places, not all places, one of the reasons why uh, certain politicians, uh, and this is, this is at a many levels, want schools to reopen is that the economy can't come back if the parents, many of whom count on school essentially to watch the kids while they're off at work, 
And if you have to be home, uh, if both parents or one parent or a single parent has to be home, their ability to go out and earn a living uh, is really, really difficult. If they could get a job, if they weren't laid off, uh, is very, very difficult. Even if they have a job working from home, is extremely difficult having to work with the, the kids during school uh, because there are certain things that have to be done to supervise them for home learning, especially the little ones. Um, so I think that that's one of the things that's making it happen. But here's, here's the practical sense of it. Uh, because a, a certain politicians are now talking about, well, overseas they've opened up schools without any problem. They have, in many cases, where they've solved the, the COVID spread problem and have cases down to very few being reported uh, uh, anew because they took the draconian measures of lockdown, like in the United States, the only place we have that so far has been uh, New York and maybe Connecticut and Massachusetts, where they're really under control. They're either steady or the decreasing because they took those hard steps earlier on. So here's what the problem is. If kids go to school and there's enough um, uh, spread in the school, not only do the kids bring it home to their parents or perhaps a grandparent who may be providing some of the daycare uh, until a mom or dad gets home from school, but teachers and staff, many of whom are in their 50s and 60s, are also going to get it. And so until you have it controlled to the point where it's sort of at a very low level, like some of these other countries have done, and some certain pockets within the United States have already done, uh, all you're going to do is help perpetuate it. And, and the proof of the pudding is that there was a, uh, 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 they opened up, uh, they tried to open up Little League here in Orange County. And uh, they were, look, the kids love it. The, the uh, moms and dads who were supporting the teams love it. And uh, we love going to the games as well. And what happened is on the first week of practice, they found out that uh, two or three people on one of the teams had uh, contracted COVID and that the whole team basically had it and they shut down the whole league. Now, I don't know that they've opened up down in your area, but they're finding these things also with uh, 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 sports teams that are beginning to get together, even at the collegiate level. And what happens is it spreads. So until we, until we get it under control, all these schools are going to be a breeding ground because anybody, certainly under eighth grade, they're not going to be six feet apart. Uh, they're right. going to be eating. Well, we agree on that. Yeah, so we agree. So the, point, the point is that uh, anytime you start putting a whole bunch of people together, younger and older, in the case of in the school, the teachers and the staff, uh, uh, you're opening it up to a lot of people getting uh, COVID. And most people will probably recover. We don't know what the long-term issues are there, but let's forget about that for a moment. So the other side of it is that opening up schools at this point in much of the country, in my opinion, is going to be a Petri dish. And we just have to sit it out for another six months and, and everybody wear a mask and social distance uh, and all those kind of things that will hopefully get this stuff under control, like a few states, <clears throat> in the, particularly the Northeast and some countries in Europe and even in uh, uh, Korea and Taiwan. They have remarkable low numbers and as much density. And they, they took the right steps a long time ago. We may have to you know, start a little bit later and get those right steps and get it down. Because otherwise, all the, all the opening the schools will do will be become a Petri dish to not only spread it within the school, especially vulnerable people, even kids who don't even know they have underlying conditions, and bring it home. And quite frankly, I need you as a partner. The, the whole reason I don't want the schools open is that you're smart. I need a smart Thank you. partner. Okay. Is that... Is that smoke I smell blowing? Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. That oh, look, I can gas. feel it. It's gas. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's your smoke blowing up my. Listen, all right. I agree with you that schools can become a petri dish. Wait, 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 wait. Could you say that again? Because some of the people might not have heard you. You said yeah, you... Uh, the the uh, part where we agree. No, yeah, no, 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 no. That you agree with me. <laughs> I agree with you that schools, particularly grammar schools can be a Petri dish. I think I think 
by the time you get to high school, I'm using my grandson as an example. Sure. By the time you get to high school, you are much more aware of your personal health and and you're much more socially aware and you're much more educated. Um, so I'm not worried about high schoolers and colleges. Where we disagree is you want to shut everything down until it's just hunky-dory. And I'm saying it ain't ever going to be that good. It's not ever good. I know you love these statistics of all these states that have shut everything down and now they're perfect. No, they're not. Everybody's having problems. My answer is that there's a balance to life. Okay, well, And a balance to life. This is not political. This is <laughs> – it can be economic, but it's, it's not I, political. So, so and, show me your favorite, and the, John. Because you, and the problem is the problem is you can't have a society – that is hunkered down for that long. How long is too long? I don't know. But look at what's happening now. People are rebelling about staying hunkered down. So my answer is we're hunkering down the wrong people. We're hunkering down 80% of the population who can survive this stuff. Why don't we make it a, a priority that the people who should be hunkered down are the people who are will be most seriously affected. You mean like and that you, other like 80 you and that me? other eight yeah. And our audience? Exactly. Yeah. And that other eighty percent should be taking care of us. It's not that they shouldn't be wearing masks, but it doesn't mean that they don't go to school. It means that they have to be aware that their actions can impact the twenty to fifty percent of people who are over fifty. And that's 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 a different mindset that we haven't approached yet. You're still listening to people say, shut everything down until it's all better. And I, my answer is, no, it ain't ever all going to be that much better. We need, to, we need to keep expanding. We need to keep expanding testing and the medical and all that other stuff. But we need to keep expanding back to normal society. You can't have everybody living in a cave. So and, I'm going to suggest, have, I'm gonna suggest that, that you, use, you use the phrase, and you just sort of threw it out there, hunky-dory. I think yeah. there's a place between hunky <laughs> and dory. And dory. Yeah. I got that right. I got the, the windows right. Uh, that's okay. good. So I think we need to, but because I, we should discuss this further next week because your namesake, Hopkins, uh, and, and plural Hopkins, Johns Hopkins, is probably yes. the single best authority for accurate information on where things are these days. That's actually who most people go to since some of the governmental uh, 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 organizations are not that reliable anymore. So Johns Hopkins has really detailed information. I don't want to down the zip code, but certain to county. And so we should discuss that. Uh, uh, next week, but we'd like to hear from you, our right. audience. Uh, uh, right. Is does it have to be hunky dory? That ha does it, or can it just be freewheeling, or is there some place in between hunky and dory? Uh, and and I think that's what most people, like myself, most people will opt for. And that is that there's no one solution for this, and hunkering down and and closing schools and keeping people from their businesses, that's not a long-term solution. Uh, we did it for three months. Did it help? Well, in some places it did, in some places it didn't, apparently. And it's not a solution. It's, it's a help. And the same thing with wearing masks. It's not a solution. It's a help. We ought to be doing all the things we can, but we ought to be going back to normal at the same time. So, and, yes. and more important than that, we need to change the mindset. The mindset is not we have to protect the kids and we have to protect the moms and dads. The mindset is let's protect the grandparents because those are the people at risk. I, my grandson, who's uh, 16, is the perfect example. He got it. He suffered. He and his friend got it the same day. They didn't get tested, but... They can't imagine what – they didn't know anybody else who got it. They can't imagine anybody – that it was anything other than COVID-19. It was different than anything they've ever had. Hey, he's walking around doing fine. You and I get it. 
we're in deep caca. So, so here, here's the thing. We've, we've actually droned on so long that this has become a public service announcement. And the public <laughs> service announcement is that if anybody is still watching this at this point, okay, <laughs> then they definitely need a sleep aid. Because yeah. if you have... Oh, no, not, we've given them sleep yeah, aid. If, <laughs> if you haven't fallen asleep at least yeah. four and a half minutes ago, somewhere between Hunky and Dory. Uh, Hunky and Dory, so yeah. We, we need... This is the alarm, the so wake-up alarm. Wanna, okay, it's over, folks. Yeah, it's over. Okay, so John, you want to say goodbye to our friends? Well, I, I want to say it is over now, so please subscribe. Okay. And, <laughs> and we promise the next one will be shorter. Subscribe to what, John? Subscribe to Celebrating Act 2 on YouTube. Yeah, right. There's a lot there of you good, go. A lot of good stuff up there. Good. Okay. So next week, Art, we'll talk about uh, statistics from John Hopkins John, and see. Johns Hopkins. Johns Hopkins. Yeah. And we'll see if I agree with them. <laughs> see ya. Bye bye. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.